Hey physics friends, I just wanted to take a moment to explain the electrophorus in detail in case you're having a hard time uh, understanding it the first go around. So what I'm going to do today is answer the question, why is it when you touch the electrophorus, do I get a shock? And then when I pull it off here, I get a shock. Put it back on there, you get a shock. And why is this pith ball, why does it go back and forth? when you put your hand on it. And then when I lift it up here, it goes back and forth again. You, you see all sorts of phenomenon with this. And it all boils down to four um, properties of electricity. The first is that like charges repel. Two negative uh, charges are going to repel one another, and two positive charges are going to repel. The second is that unlike charges are going to attract. So a positive is going to attract a negative. The third is that when you have a conductor, so something like a like metal, electrons can move around the surface of this metal. And the fourth is that when you have an insulator like styrofoam, electrons are stuck to that surface. They can't move on an insulator. So let's get started. So here I've got my plate, a styrofoam plate. And normally that styrofoam plate, it's got as exact same amount of positive as it does negative. And when you've got the same amount, that's called neutral. When I rub my rabbit fur on this, I overload it with electrons. Why do I give it electrons? I don't exactly know. I don't know why rubbing it with rabbit fur imparts more electrons onto it. I, I just don't know the answer to that question. So, now I've got my pi tin here. And my pi tin also has, uh, when it's neutral, has the same amount of positive and negative charges. Now, when I bring that pi tin down close to that plate, now remember, the, the difference between the pi tin and the styrofoam is the styrofoam, the electrons, they cannot move along that surface. But on the pi tin, they can, and they do. They don't, these electrons on the pi tin do not like the electrons that are on the styrofoam plate. But the difference is the electrons on the pi tin can move and get out of dodge. So what they end up doing is they end up moving up to the edges as far away from the bottom of the pie plate as possible. And this is called induction. You're, you're pushing the electrons around. And now if you'll look, I've got a positive. The bottom of the pie plate is positive, And the styrofoam plate is negative. So there's going to be an attractive force. That's what we call static cling. This, that's why these things kind of stick together. Now, when you bring your finger into this mix, so here comes your finger. When you bring your finger in here, what happens is these electrons, again, the electrons don't like each other, like charges don't like each other. These ones here, they actually will jump onto your finger to get as far away from you as possible. So what's happening is electricity is going from the pie plate to your finger. Electrons are traveling from the pie plate to your finger, and that's what we call electric current. That's what that shock that you're hearing is. That snap is electrons traveling from the pie plate to your finger. Now all of these things, then you bring your finger, they travel down your finger and go into the ground to get even farther away. So you've taken electrons away. Now, when you take this pie plate up, now you'll notice that since you've taken the electrons away, now this pie plate is positive. It's, it's taken away, when we take away electrons, it becomes positively charged. So now, when, my, when I bring my finger over towards it again, my finger naturally has just electrons on it. Now in this case, the snap that you hear when you touch it again 
our electrons coming to fill this back up and make it neutral. Now electricity is traveling from your finger to the pie plate to fill it back up. And that's why we've got that snap that you hear when you touch it. And then you bring the pie plate back down and the process repeats itself. These electrons get repelled up to the top. You bring your finger in. Those electrons zoop, go up to your finger, over to the ground. You take your finger away, which leaves this whole thing positively charged. So that's, that's why you're hearing that shock when you touch it, lift it up, touch it. Now, you need to make sure that when we're lifting this thing up, we have a styrofoam uh, cup here. And that styrofoam cup is an insulator. That's a way for us to make sure that this um, pie plate is electrically um, cut off from the rest of the world. So the next thing I'm going to try to answer is, why does that ball go back and forth? What's going on? Why does that ball go back and forth. I think the easiest way for me to maybe explain that is kind of in like a cartoon form. I wish I had um, some way to animate with this. Maybe later on I'll be able to figure that out. But I'm going to try to do my best to cartoon this. So you've rubbed the plate with rabbit fur. You put your pie plate on that and putting the pie plate on that all of those electrons start gathering being pushed away from each other because of repulsion I've got this cup here and I've got my little pith ball now the pith ball there are naturally positive and negative charges on the pith ball too I'll just draw a couple on here. Now, because there are electrons right here, because I have electrons there, what, it's, what those are going to do is they're going to push the electrons on that pith ball to the other side. So any electrons that are on that pith ball, that are just naturally there, they're going to go to the other side because they don't like those, which then leaves this side positive and that's why you get that attractive force because positive and negative attract each other and all of a sudden now this pith ball goes and touches the pie plate let's see here I'm trying to paste all this stuff So now, when the pith ball touches, so when the pith ball comes over and makes contact with that um, side, what ends up happening is some of the electrons jump onto the pith ball. And when you have an overload, some of these electrons jump over onto here, and now all of a sudden the pith ball becomes negatively charged, and then it gets repelled. So that pith ball now has too many electrons on it, and now the pith ball gets forced away. And that's why you see that thing move away. Now, when you bring your finger into this, when your finger comes into this mix, What happens is now the electrons can jump onto your finger. So some of these electrons from the pith ball will jump onto your finger and then they'll travel to the ground, getting as far away from each other as possible. And now 
the process ends up repeating itself. And then you en actually end up going back to where we started before. Now you're neutral. The electrons go as far away from the ones on the pi plate, which makes the front side of that pith ball positively charged. It touches, electrons jump onto it, they get repelled, they go to your finger, they deposit them on your finger, and then the, the cycle repeats itself. So this is kind of like a delivery truck. What it's doing is it's taking um, electrons from the pie plate onto your finger, just taking them from the pie plate onto your finger, from the pie plate onto your finger, and so on. Now, how this process is different if you pick it up. Do you remember be in the last case when I told you if you pick this up you pick it up and it's positively charged so you've got our styrofoam plate which we've rubbed and we've got all those electrons on it and now we've got our pie plate which all the electrons have migrated up to the top your finger comes in those electrons jump onto your finger and they go away which leaves our pie plate positively charged. Since electrons have left, our pi plate is now positively charged when we lift it away from the styrofoam plate. So then we've got that pith ball again. And now the opposite happens. The pith ball having both positive and negative charges on it, what's going to happen is now the electrons, because this is metal, the pith ball, the electric charges are able to move around on the pith ball. They move to this side and they attract. This pith ball gets attracted to the pie plate. When it touches the pie plate, when that pith ball comes in contact with the pie plate, some of those electrons, there's not many because the pith ball is pretty small, they jump over. And all of a sudden, now these things are the same, so the pith ball gets repelled. And then in comes your finger. So your finger comes into the mix, and now your finger has electrons. They jump onto the pith ball. The, process, the, the electrons go to this side. It gets attracted. It deposits the electrons onto the, the pie plate, repeating, its, repeating itself. So in this case, electrons are flowing from your finger to the pie plate to eventually fill the pie plate up. And when the pie plate gets filled up, then this is going to stop. This won't, this won't be going back and forth forever. As soon as the pie plate goes back to neutral, as in, if the delivery truck now taking electrons from your finger to the pie plate, when they get filled up, it's going to stop. So this is kind of the mechanism that happens in the electrophorus that makes this happen. That First of all, the like charges repel. And if you have a piece of metal, those like charges can travel on the surface to get as far away as possible. And then unlike a charges attract. So sometimes you have opposite charges, which will leave them to attract. And just as one kind of final demo to, to close it up, I've got this video. It shows a, a balloon. So if I rub a balloon on a sweater, you'll see that since the balloon is plastic, it, uh, the charges, it's, an, it's an insulator. They can't uh, move around. They're stuck where they're at. And when I take the electrons away, you'll see that the sweater is left positive, and then they attract. And then if I bring them over here, you'll see the wall. I push the electrons away, which leaves it positive, and now you've got attraction right here.